acoustic automation. Okay, so we have a hopefully have a decent handle on the quartet or Apogee Maestro 2 program here, which controls the hardware. All right, now we want to actually record something. Let's switch over to Logic and get something going. Once we have this program installed, we don't really need to use it for Logic, but maybe it's easier. It's just, it, we do need to use it if we want to have that low latency mixer happening. That has to be done through this program. If you find that Logic's software monitoring is sufficient, then you can basically forget this program because everything's going to be done in Logic. So let's launch Logic. We, we go to our Applications folder, open it up. Uh, if we say cancel and then we say new new track, we're going to get a thing like this. It's going to say empty project. We are going to say choose for an empty project. And now it's going to say, oh, well, you're going to need some tracks on this project. And it's going to start out with a software instrument, which would be something like recording a virtual MIDI sort of keyboard. We don't want that. So we click audio. Audio is an actual recording. And input. There's a bunch of input options here. I don't know why there's so many. It's a lot of, like long list. I guess I do. It's because it's four for the microphones and then eight for the ADAT or the ADAT optical input. So five through twelve, you're not going to care about. And even these one, two, three, four, these pairs, I think that those also don't matter. So one, two, three, four, fine. Let's say input is input three because that's where I have my good microphone hooked up right now. Don't know about these, ascending, open library, blah, blah, blah. Input device, we want to make sure that's on Quartet. If I click that, it pops open the preferences panel for Logic, and it goes to the audio tab right away, and it chooses devices. Core audio is checked and enabled. That's good because that's kind of the system that this is using. Output device is Quartet. That's good. It means it's going to be monitoring on the Quartet through the headphones or through the monitors. Input device, Quartet, that's good. That means that it's going to be using the lines from the quartet as the inputs. Obviously, we wouldn't want to use the computer's microphones, which is what would happen if we use system setting or built-in microphone, so quartet. I.O. buffer size. With this, you want it to be as low as possible. However, if your computer seems to start doing funny things like chopping out or not being able to record the tracks, then you might need to increase this size. If you increase the size, the latency increases correspondingly. So you make this higher, latency 28 milliseconds, that's definitely going to be noticeable. That's going to be something that you can really hear. But something low like this, I can't tell when I'm just listening to just this. It's really, it's hardly distinguishable. When I have both channels in the headphones at the same time, it's noticeable, like you can hear it. It sounds like a little bit of a coarse effect almost. It's a little bit weird, but if you're just listening to one monitoring system, then a low setting like this is probably fine. Now, I'm gonna look around somewhere. Yeah, general, so we're still under audio, we're on general. We have this checkbox for software monitoring. That means that what Logic plays and what Logic records, we have the option of monitoring it back out through our hardware and hearing it in the headphones or the monitors if you're using those. To start with, keep this enabled. If you notice problems recording, you could disable this, but it's a good starting place, especially if you're using headphones um, and the timing issue doesn't come up. So we'll leave that on. We'll come back. I'll, I'll talk about where we might disable that later on. So now I'm going to close this. It's input device quartet, output device quartet, output three and four. I'm going to change output to one and two because that I think makes more sense. Output one and two. When we switch back to Apogee, has to do with what we're seeing right here. So when I choose a set of outputs in Logic, it comes back to one and two and three and four. So as I play the track and I play it to output one and two, then it's going to show up on the software return and I'm going to be able to hear it in this mix. So ultimately probably doesn't really matter. Um, I guess seven and eight might be the headphones. I don't really know. Um, we'll see, but I think one and two is going to work just fine. Number of tracks, we're going to start with just one. I will show how to add more later. So we're going to click create. And now we can see since I 
have one track here and I already have my level set up on the microphone. It's kind of ready to record and it's monitoring levels and I don't actually hear this monitoring yet, but I'm going to click this I button, which is input monitoring button, here incoming signals on audio tracks that aren't record enabled. So I'm gonna click that and now you'd think I could hear it, but I really can't still, so I don't know if that's because this is on stereo output. Ah, it is because, okay, so I'm outputting stereo output out whatever we said, one and two. Um, I'm gonna come back to Apogee. I'm gonna go to output settings. And now I have my headphones on mixer one. But since on Logic, I chose one and two, I'm gonna put my headphones right here. And now, can I hear it? Check one, two, check one, two. I still can't hear it, so that's weird. Ah, that's because my headphones are muted. Un unmute them. Oh, now I can hear everything. Double studio time, it's really weird. Uh, come back here, mixer one. Okay, now I'm back to mixer, and that's like I can hear. Okay, I'm gonna turn it down because like wow, it's too much. Okay, that because because one and two were also coming out the mixer. So if check one two, check one two, check one two. If I mix this all the way to the left, and then I go over here and I mix this one all the way to the right, and then I keep apogee, and I have the so I've mixed logic all the way to the right and it's coming into this software return only on the right channel and I've mixed the microphone into the channel on the left all the way to the left and it's coming in the mixer master now if I turn this up right here and I bring this up to level zero we're gonna see that that corresponds with a mixer master coming in here and if you could hear this now it would sound a little bit weird but I'm talking in the the studio microphone I have on the desk and the left channel is basically in real time, and the right channel is delayed by three or six milliseconds or whatever. Six milliseconds doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're listening to it in the headphones, it's definitely a little bit of a weird effect. So you can try this pattern if you wanna see how much that latency is and if it matters, but also you could just shut this one off. Now I'm only in the right, which is a little bit weird here because the software return is on one and two, if I wanted to, I could just move my headphones over here to one and two. And now I'm still only in the right channel. But if I move this back to the center, now to me it sounds basically, I'm gonna get it right and right in the center. It sounds just right. It sounds, I can't even tell. It doesn't seem like it's delayed. It seems just fine. So that seems pretty good. Um, all right, so. Now let's look at the tracks. So we have some options up here in Logic. We have our track, since there's only one all the way over here on the left and we can see it and we can control it. These yellow boxes are popping up because I have the question mark enabled. If I turn that off, they won't turn up anymore, but it's kind of handy to keep them on. I can see that input monitoring is enabled. If I click this, now I can't hear myself in the headphones anymore. So I click that, I can't hear myself in the headphones. I turn it back on, now I can hear myself in the headphones. Record means record is enabled, so this track will record when I click the record button. Um, the metro metronome kicks in, click, 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 click. I'm gonna turn that off. Don't need to count in when I start recording. And now it's actually recording, and if I get up nice closer to the microphone here, excuse me, um, I can see that it is recording at whatever level's there, and I click stop, and then it might go back and um, set these levels to something interesting or whatever. Uh, what I kind of like to do when I'm in Logic is open up this toolbar. No, not the toolbar. This one here, the mixer button, X. If I hit X on the keyboard, this would also come up. So now I have my audio track one and my stereo output and I guess my master. So audio track one is based on input three because that's what I set up when I set up the file. And output is Somewhere there is a setting for this, but I just stereo out, maybe it may be a stereo out, output, stereo output corresponds to this. I don't know why that's not like just a little obvious choice, but for whatever reason it's not, that's really annoying. Um, somehow there's, you can mess with the outputs, you can have multiple outputs if you have different monitors, you could have that. Um, 
this section up here is what was created when you installed the Maestro software. And so 39 input gain field and knob. If I want to click that, I could just enter something like 42. Okay, now I have just a little bit more gain. It's going to be a little bit hotter. I can also take this knob and do it in the same way. Move it up and oh, we're getting loud, loud, loud. Oh my gosh, it's so loud. And bring it back down and down to a reasonable level, whatever that reasonable level might be. If I turn off my phantom power, there's no little tooltip on this, but if I turn off my phantom power and... <laughs> All right, I turned it off, but for whatever reason, it turned itself back on. I don't know, a little bit weird. Okay, now it's gone. The phantom power is gone, and I my microphone is no longer active. The computer microphone obviously still works. I turn phantom power back on, and boom, the microphone kicks back in, and great, we're back to life here. And I can see this little phase invert thing, and I don't know you can hear it, but boy, does it really do. It doesn't really seem to do exactly anything, but phase invert is an option if you want if you want to choose different levels. So now you're noticing instrument mic 10 dB for plus 4 dB. Uh, these are the same settings that are basically available in the input section of the Apogee panel. And so you really don't need to use this input panel if you're using Logic because 42, 42, it's there at the same level. If I turn it up right here to of course, the number doesn't update. Sometimes I don't know why that would happen. Uh, this seems like about 60 to me. I don't know why it's not updating. It's not updating over 45. That's outdated. 33? 33. Oh, yeah, 33. All right. Come on, buddy. What you doing here? 42. Oh, hey, it popped back up. It's a little bit janky. 33. It's definitely not 33 now. It sounds like it's more like a oh 58, 58. Yeah, that sounds good. So it just takes a little bit. I don't know why it takes a little bit, but that's what it does. So let's set this down to like something like something there. Um, so that's an option there. Now, when we want to maybe do a multi-track recording, we can do track, new tracks. It's gonna prop down that same sort of section. Nope, maybe, maybe, yep. Yeah. Okay, it's thinking. It's thinking. Here it comes. You can do it, Logic. Okay. Audio. Let's go to input two. Quartet. We're still on quartet. Number tracks one. If you want to make a few at a time, you could change this number higher and we make a couple. Audio two. If I want to make it bigger, I can grab right here and drag it down. Audio two. Input two. It's on the quartet still. It's still going out the same output. This one is my handheld microphone here that is on the on the desk, but I know I'm holding it. I'm going to bring up the level here, and you can see similar thing. It's having same sort of thing, and yeah. So that's how you'd have multiple recording. If you want to record on both of them at once, then you click record, and now it's recording on both. And this one is a little bit too hot, so I suppose you can even turn the level down while you're recording. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. I'm going to clear my levels on the board here. Hit the C button. Okay, meter's cleared. And I am still recording. And click stop. And then I can go back here and I click play. Okay. And I figured something else out, which is a little bit more about monitoring and mixing and sending and all that jazz. So I've gone over to output recording. And I have set my phones to mixer one. So that means whatever I see here is what's going to be in my headphones, which right now, no levels, no nothing. And that's because I have set my level down here and I've mixed these to my left and right so I can tell. And now I hear this microphone, mic three, in my left ear only. Flip it down, don't hear anything. Flip this one up. Now I hear other microphone, which I'm going to pick up and hold next to my mouth. And now I hear this one in my right ear and I'm going to bring it back down and now I hear nothing in my ears right now and I have software return on three and four and they're doing nothing right now because three and four have nothing coming into them. Now I have logic here recording and I guess it's not input monitoring and that's fine and if I turn on or actually it is it's orange it's very hard to see but if I turn on input monitoring it's on right now it's on for both channels 
I still don't hear anything, even though it's input monitoring here and it's output monitoring here. That's because it's going out the stereo out, which is chosen here, output stereo out, output stereo out. Over here, if I go to output here, uh, where is it? Stereo out, I think stereo out goes to one and two. Whatever the case, stereo output does not go to three and four. Stereo out goes to one and two. So if I have been using this mixer, I'd be hearing everything nice and hot, but I'm not. I'm using three and four right here. And so if I come back to Logic and I right click onto stereo out. So if I come here and I right click stereo output, no, I'm gonna change output to output three and four. And now I hear this microphone, I guess over here, I hear that microphone out, output three, four, which in my Apogee, I see is now coming right here and I hear good and hot in my microphone, my headphones. And now if I turn down here, now I hear it just a tiny little bit. Here I hear it a reasonable amount and here I hear it like a little bit too much. So that is what you do. You right click on output and you choose the output that you want it to go to. And if I choose five and six, boom, nothing is happening again. The levels are gone. Five and six, no output. Stereo output, if I choose this one to output 5, 6 as well, then we'll even see here, now there's nothing happening there. And so right clicking is the secret. You could have no output, now oh, it's just nothing's gonna happen. There's not gonna be no, no output, it's not gonna be monitored anywhere. Uh, be another way to move it, but we choose stereo output and then it's gonna be going on the stereo output or output 5 and 6. I guess it's magically gonna choose which ones we wanna show, so stereo output 3 and 4. Three and four, now I can hear it in my headphones again because three and four are coming in here, they're coming in here, and they are piped through to my headphones, mixer one to the headphones. So that is how you do the mixing. And now I could do something fun like add EQ here. No, not EQ, that's kind of boring. Um, I could go on here and I could do, hey, that's way fancier. I can click here and I could go down to reverb and I could do chroma verb and I could do mono and now I get echo and I'm in a room and I can hear that room and it's echoing and you can see that it's echoing because of all this crazy business right here even though you can't hear it in your headphones and I hear this in my headphones because I'm going to shrink this down a little bit because this channel is coming out output three, four, and it's going into the mixer in the software return three, four, and I hear that echo good and clear right here in my headphones. Now if I turn this down, I no longer hear that in my headphones even though like in Logic it's still doing the echo thing. And if I turn up my microphones here, I hear, I hear my microphones monitoring. Now I hear my microphones in my real time monitor and now if I bring this up just like a little bit, now I just get like a little decent amount, like I'm in like a tiny little room with like a little bit of echo. Um, if I turn up, now I can obviously like edit my settings on my echo at 34 seconds. That's so much echo. It's like I'm in a huge tone. But anyway, there's obviously lots of settings for what sorts of echo and reverb that I want. And this sounds very good to me. And so I think there's a lot of things there that might be fun to play with, but now I can hear a little bit of them in the monitor as I may be recording. And I could go here and I could click record and it would start recording and I would still actually be hearing a tiny bit of that echo, which might, I don't know, help me sing better or something like that. Okay. So now let's Okay, so now let's put this together and record a mix with some effects in Logic and I've actually hooked up the output. So what you're hearing will be actually what the board is putting out as well. You'll be hearing the same as the headphones effectively. Um all right. First things first, I have actual microphones on channels two and three, and I'll put both of them at 
30 to start out with, I think I'm going to need a little bit more than that pretty soon. Let's go over to Logic. I'm going to double click here to make a new track. Or I could have gone to Track, New Track, New Audio Track. Uh, the default for this new track that I've created, it popped in down here, it's input 2, but we want it on input 3. So we can use our second microphone. Uh, it started out now as recording enabled. We're going to record enable on both of these tracks. And we're going to have both of them for input monitoring. So I think I can hear myself a tiny, tiny bit right now. I'm going to pop back over to here, back to my mixer. I see that there is just a little bit here. Software return one and two, that should be fine. Wondering why, I guess my headphones are maybe muted right now. No, they're just, okay. Now I'm just gonna turn them up a little bit more and I can hear myself pretty good and loud and clear. Now I'm gonna pan both of these over all the way to the left. Check one, two, check one, two. And now the thing is, I still hear myself in both the left and the right. Pan this one over to the right. And so now the software monitoring from Logic is in the right, and the software, mon the kind of real time monitoring from this one is in the left. And I'm just going to keep it that way for a little bit here. Now, sadly, you can't hear that in the screen recording, but there's a tiny bit of an effect that I can hear um, in the headphones. So if you start follow this process along, you'll be able to see the difference now. So what I'm going to do is go into my, I think, output effects. And uh, I guess the EQ is fine. We could, we'll just shut that one off for now. Click here, because that's where I actually wanted to click and go to reverb and do the chroma verb again, and we'll do stereo. Uh, and now, woo boy, and I suspect you can hear this as well. There is reverb added. And interestingly, I'm getting it on both channels because that's how the stereo works. I'm going to pan it to the right here. And now the echo or the reverb is only in the right. And just, I guess, to make this really obvious, let's put this up to like five, 12 seconds, no, five seconds. As the color fades away, that's how long the reverb is lasting. And you can see it's taking about five seconds to go away. And when I come back here, now the right channel is still doing stuff while the left channel stops basically instantly as soon as I'm talking. So that's all getting fed back through a cable into my line one, which is why I'm recording this right now with the screen recording program. And so I have fast monitoring from these two channels. And if I put these back to the center, and it's going to start sounding a little bit more balanced to me. Though obviously it still sounds super funky because all the reverb is on the right channel still. So if I come into here, and actually, okay, now what happens if I turn off the input monitor? Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, and I'm back to just having just kind of nothing, no, no effects because it's not sending it through the output as I'm monitoring it. And I'm going to move these to their central point, which doesn't actually change anything right now, but when I change the output here, check, 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 check. Uh, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this microphone on the right and this microphone on the left so that my stereo microphones, one over here on the left, and one over here on the right, can obviously inverted right now. And now I'm back in the center. And five seconds, and it's way too long. So let's bring that down to about a second. Um, now it's hard to even tell if it's there or not, so let's just click this little power button here. And do we have any reverb now? Okay, yeah, that sounds super dead. And that sounds very echoey and obvious that it's there now. So a little bit of a mind trick when you go from that big of a change. All right, so we're over here. We are recording. We have levels. If I wanted to, now I can just close this out. It obviously stays right here, so it's still running. And then I can click record. And now I am recording these two channels, except that it appears not to be. So here's a little interesting thing. When these two are record enabled, this track is selected right now. I can click audio one, now this one's selected. 
It's a little bit funny the way they highlight these buttons, but red blinking means that it's record enabled. But when I unrecord enable this one, it still has the red R there. Whereas this one has like the orange eye because it's input enabled. If I turn that off, now it's just gray. And it's very funny when I click on it. Oh, that's interesting. Now we're not hearing anything over here anymore. I don't know why that would be. Uh, okay, now I am, huh. Am I only input monitoring? That's weird. I don't know why this would change, but for whatever reason, it's now no longer sending this one over to here, but I guess because recording it was not on. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Why are you not going to the output and doing that? Um, oh, because, no, hard to say um, what the reasoning for that is. Check one, two, check one, two. Uh, now they're both enabled again. Check one, two, check one, two. Yep, that's what we expect, kind of. Um, turn this one off. I don't um, interesting. I wonder if we can go out channel two only. And go out channel. Hmm. No? Output mono. Channel one. Now, if I go over to this one, it's on the right. No, that doesn't really seem to be working. Go to this one, it's over here. Uh, the way the levels of this seem just a little bit odd. Check. So now I have both tracks record enabled. I have them presumably panned to different sides. I'm gonna bring up the levels a little bit so we get a little bit more though I'm hearing plenty of computer fan because this thing's been working hard all day, but that's just what we're gonna get for that. What if I turn this off for a little bit? I just get interesting left, right? Hello over here. Hello over here. <coughs> Check, 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 check. All right, so both are record enabled and input monitoring on both of them. For whatever reason, it looks a little bit different, but that's just because one channel is selected or not. Um, so that is a thing to get used to. We got our levels here, microphones at the same level, they're about equidistant for me. And now if I record, it records both channels and I can go back and have a stereo mix recording. And now if I record, it records both channels and I can go back and have a stereo mix. Thanks so much for watching part two of the how to record with Apogee Quartet and Logic Pro 10. If you have any questions, Leave them in the comments and I will either reply to the comments or record a subsequent video if it's something that I can answer. Feel free to click the Amazon links if you need any of the gear mentioned here. Thanks for watching this acoustic automation production.